this is how to use the replay mod for Minecraft. So when we install the replay mod, you'll notice there's a new icon which is called the replay viewer. And when we go in here, this actually allows us to watch our replays, which I'll show you a little bit later. And there's a few different options and controls here, which we can access once we have some saved files. Also, when we press single player, you'll notice there's a new button which says record single player. If this is selected and it has a cross, that means it will record replays on your single player worlds, not just in multiplayer mode. So I recommend keeping this ticked. If this is enabled by default, the replay mod will automatically record all of your sessions. So now when we drop in, you can see there's a new chat message which says recording started. And you can see there's also an icon in the top left saying recording. So this means that replay mod has obviously resumed recording automatically. If I press escape, you can see we have some controls here too. I can press pause recording to just temporarily pause it, or I can press stop to stop the replay entirely. That will save the replay and then we can access it from the main menu. If we just press start recording, for example, Whilst recording, we can press the M key and this basically adds event markers to the timeline on our clip. So if something major happens, you can press the M key and it's kind of like a cue to mark it for later. So let's just click stop recording again and let's just press save and quit to title. And now you can see in the top right, it says saving replay file and we can just press done and it shows the files are saved and we can also press X to delete any of those two recordings. Then from here, if we click on the replay viewer, now I can actually explain this a bit more. So now we have two different replays we've recorded. It shows us the world. It shows us the date and time they were actually recorded on below as well as that data in the file name and also an icon which may or may not display which is usually a preview of the world or the duration of the actual clip itself it's also a settings button in the top right if we click that we can go through various settings we can enable notifications we can record single player that's basically the same as the option which i showed you earlier which we enabled in the single player world creation screen the recording indicator we can turn that on and off we can record servers so that's if we want to record multiplayer or not automatic recording will automatically record when we connect to a server or to a world, show or hide the chat, and show the preview of the path of the file name. We can also change the full brightness mode to gamma, night vision, or both, the camera to classic or vanilla-ish, and also the default interpolator to the following settings. So if we press done now, there's some controls also at the bottom. So we can press load to load the recording of the world itself, or press rename to rename the file name. So I could just change this to recording one. Also, we can press edit. So this will allow us to actually go into this timeline editor. So so this unnamed event mark here is when we press M earlier and it saved that marker as data in the clip. So now we can see at two seconds in the clip, it's actually placed a marker. We can also insert splits to split the replay, insert cuts or end cuts, and then we can apply the edits here and then also close that. You can also press cancel just to go off the screen itself and you can also delete the clip. I'm just gonna press load. And now you can see we're now actually in the replay mode because we're actually accessing the clip. As you can see, here's my player here, which is floating above this arena. He is actually part of the clip. He's part of the scene. The reason I can view him is we're actually viewing a clip. We're not really in the player's view itself. So basic controls, WASD, as you can see, moves in different directions of the screen. Space goes up and shift goes down, just like in spectator mode or creative mode, basically operates the same. If we use the mouse wheel and we scroll up, it makes us actually fly around the scene quicker and if we scroll down it makes us slow down as you can see and of course this camera mode we're accessing right now if you go into the options on the main menu i showed you earlier that's what is changed when you actually modify the camera style whilst we're in the recording itself we can actually tilt the camera so if you press j or hold j rather it will automatically tilt the screen clockwise as you can see and if we press l it will tilt it anti-clockwise or counterclockwise. So this is how to actually tilt the screen with J and L. Also K, if we roll it and we don't know how to reset it, we can just tap K and it'll reset it to the default view, which is really useful. And if we hold control while we're actually tilting, we can tilt it much slower. So if I just press J, it kind of moves very quick. If I hold control at the same time, it moves it very slowly. So we can kind of do precise movements. And that obviously works with J or L. Now we can actually spectate living entities within replay mode. So if I want to do this, basically, we want to look at an entity and when we look at the entity it will now draw this crosshair over the player so now what we can do is we can right click and when we right click it now lets us access the entity's view itself so i'm now looking at through the eyes of the zombie so we're within the clip but we're actually accessing the zombie's view so it's the pov from the zombie that we're actually accessing this replay from we can use the sneak key shift to exit so we can right click to basically possess the mob and we can shift to exit possessing the mob so if i right click it and then i press p to play the clip 
Now you can see I'm actually from the view of the zombie as he's walking. And then I can press shift to obviously remove myself. Replay speed. There's a play button in the top left corner of the screen. And the shortcut for this, as I just showed you, was P. So P is obviously to resume the clip and to pause the clip. And all entities, particles, and updates to any blocks or ticks will be frozen until you press P to resume this, okay? And of course, you can see even though I've paused the clip, I can still fly around the scene and do what I want whilst the clip is obviously not in motion. Now, next to the pause key, you can see there's actually a speed slider. Using the speed slider, we actually control how fast the time is in the replay, which passes, okay? The minimum value is 0.1 and the default value is 1 and the maximum speed is 8 times as fast. So if we press T, which we basically use to access the Minecraft chat, we can then actually view our cursor and then we can select options. So I can pause and unpause with my mouse instead of the shortcut and I can also modify the speed. So now we're moving the clip three times and we can go all the way up to eight times. And of course, I'm going to go and set this to default, which is number one. There's also some other settings here. So we can play the camera's path from the cursor position. And to do this, we need to add two position keyframes and two time keyframes. And the way we do this is we actually create them with this. So I can press this position keyframe here and then I could move along in the time Line, for an example and move placement add another position keyframe and now you can see we basically have two of these camera paths at these two positions i could add a time keyframe here then add a time keyframe there for an example and then we can press render camera path from here we can access the video setting screen so we can change the rendering method so we can change the default rendering to the following options which i'm just going to show you we can also change the encoding presets so we can actually render in a different encoder we can change the resolution of the video we probably want it to be in 1080 but you can also change that here the bit rate of the file the video frame rate best to keep it at 60 and also the output file so we can change the file name and obviously where it saves there's also advanced settings so do we want to render the name tags preserve alpha channel stabilize the your pitch or roll of the camera do we want to add chroma key in so if we're in a world with like bright green blocks or something and there's a few other options like anti-aliasing over here as well now if you do want to render this add it to the queue or click render you do actually need to have this installed which is called f of mpeg this is basically a file codec or encoding pack this is required by windows to actually render files using this codec pack so you need to go ahead and download this but once you download it and follow the tutorial in the documentation on the replaymod.com website which shows you how to do this then you can actually render with this feature also of course with the timeline we can move this here and when we move this you can see the actual path itself the camera actually moves between the two paths based on the timeline but this basically skips along the frames so the bottom one is basically the keyframes and the top one is basically the time within the recording itself let me explain now that i've showed you the keyframe timeline and i've showed you the time and position keyframes let's actually explain what they are so position keyframes which we added before is basically the components of a camera path which are registered as position keyframe so position keyframe basically stores the position of the camera so that's the x y z axis the your pitch and roll of the camera itself and you can set these obviously with these buttons that we used before and basically it initially contains the state that the camera was in when we created that keyframe as we did before so any of these two keyframes we set for the position which is these pluses these basically hold that data within them and we can move them by clicking and dragging them to where we want on the position keyframe timeline and basically depending where our cursor actually is on this timeline at the time of pressing this button it will obviously place them at the position of the yellow marker right and then it'll obviously turn red as you can see to indicate that there's already a keyframe on that frame and we can double click it and then it shows us the actual data within that keyframe itself and then we can edit certain values by adding multiple position keyframes on the keyframe timeline we can use this to create a simple camera path which is obviously used with the path preview so you can press play and now we can preview that path we actually created earlier as you can see and it's shown us the preview of the camera we created so if you want to make really cinematic shots with a replay mod you're gonna have to use these keyframes to create an artificial camera around the world for an example if you want to do like a world tour that's how this works and by right clicking on any of these frames it will basically jump to position of the camera on that frame now if i press h it basically draws and undraws or hides and shows the actual path preview this is basically toggling a visual representation of the camera path itself Itself that we just created so you can see when we press h it disappears and when we press it again it also toggles again and you can see there's a red line in the world which follows the camera path itself to visually kind of represent where the positions are the path interpolation setting is respected in this preview so the setting that we have before when we double click on it and it says interpolator this is obviously previewed in the sense time keyframes so these ones so these bottom ones right double clicking on them obviously we can edit them so what are these well time keyframes are basically used to 
precisely control time traveling during the camera path. So every time keyframe on this timeline basically represents a timestamp in the replay itself. You can set a time keyframe with the button which we used earlier anywhere obviously on this keyframe timeline and basically initially controls the replay's point in time when creating the keyframe. So when we play the camera path as we have done here, the replay's time will interplay between the set time keyframes in the keyframes intervals. Two time keyframes with the same timestamp, so if we created them basically on the same frame, so both at 15 seconds for example, will freeze the replay time for the duration of their interval. If we right click on a time keyframe, you can jump to the timestamp of that keyframe value. Now if you travel backwards in time, this is not supported during camera path, so don't add a time keyframe which contains an earlier point in time after another time keyframe. Frame, okay so that's important now to play the first camera path just click the play button which is next to the keyframe timeline which is here which i showed you earlier and this will obviously preview it by default the camera path starts from the cursor position on the keyframe timeline so wherever this yellow cursor is when we press play and by clicking while holding the control key we can start from the beginning regardless of the cursor's position so synchronizing timelines so if we use the v key as you can see here this synchronizes the keyframe timeline with the time that passed since the last keyframes timestamp. So as you can see, if we press V, it kind of resets it, right? This means that pressing V basically moves the keyframe timelines cursor to the position where placing a keyframe would result in a replay speed of the speed slider's current value between the newly placed and the last time keyframe. If we're holding shift while synchronizing it, it will be synchronized as if the speed slider's value was 1.0. So spectator keyframes. So while spectating an entity, when we right clicked earlier, the add position keyframe changes to add spectator keyframe which is a blue button. To successfully spectate an entity, you always need at least two spectator keyframes created while spectating the same entity. Basically on the keyframe timeline here, the periods during which you're spectating an entity are basically marked with a blue line. So if I was to press add spectator keyframe here and then go along and press another one and then press shift, we now have another path which has been created which represents a blue line in between these two points, okay? To leave a spectated entity during the camera path, we created earlier you basically add a normal position keyframe so if we just press play now it'll move through our camera and then it'll switch into our entity and then it'll spectate the entity for a little bit marked by these blue lines then it'll move away from the entity to our next position keyframe so now our replay will glide in with the camera it'll go to the zombies view and then it'll glide out to the next position so we'll basically switch in between different views now to edit keyframes basically simply just double click them it could be any type of keyframe for example a position keyframe and basically it opens up a gui within the timeline where we can modify some of the options right this allows us to modify the keyframes properties we can precisely set the keyframes position on the timeline by editing these boxes and we can change its position values specifically as well. So this is for more refined movement by typing in numbers and integers. Now to remove actual keyframes, we just press on one and just press delete and it deletes it from the timeline and we can then just add it back if we want to. Simple as that. If we press delete, the button goes from red to green to indicate that the keyframe has been removed. Also, we can press the X key. This opens up what's called the keyframe repository and every replay file has a separate keyframe repository which basically contains several keyframe presets. To save your keyframes currently on the timeline within this clip, we could click the save as button and from here we could just type in keyframe preset for an example to save it and then I could click it and then we could also press the rename button if we want to rename that we could also press load if we want to load that preset and we could also press the remove button if we want to permanently delete this keyframe preset we've created from the repository so this is just easy to reference and access them later now when we press the render camera path button earlier I do want to go through some rendering methods which I didn't explain in detail earlier the replay mod not only allows you to render the normal videos on YouTube that you see every day per se but also you can render things like 360 degree videos 3d videos and more there's some really powerful options and this is done by changing the rendering method using this drop down list on the rendering setting screen so default rendering basically renders the video in the specified resolution it's the fastest rendering option and it's just basic and self-explanatory right stereoscopic rendering basically renders the video as a stereoscopic so that's a side by side 3d piece and it's usable by different 3d technologies and the image for one eye is half the width of the video itself. Cubic rendering, so
So this renders the video with a 360 degree panoramic view using something called cubic projection. This is usable by several 360 degree video players and the Oculus Rift, which is a VR headset. For example, the VR player. Whilst cubic videos can't be used for YouTube's 360 degree videos feature, it takes less time to render them. So if your player is compatible with cubic projection anyway, you can use the setting to render as an output. Next one is equi rectangular rendering. So this renders the video with a 360 degree panoramic view using something called equi rectangular projection. This is basically usable by YouTube's new 360 degree video function, which you may have seen on YouTube in the past few years, and several other video players and the Oculus Rift again, and it's VR player. But you do have to inject some metadata and follow the guide or tutorial on the replay mod website to actually set this up properly. And then also you have ODS rendering. So this renders the video with a stereoscopic 3D 360 degree panoramic view, which is called VR video. And this is usable by YouTube's new VR video function. So a lot of really cool rendering settings within the render options here. After choosing the rendering mode, obviously you can then further customize the rendered video like I showed you earlier when we went through the basic overview. For the encoding presets, we have custom bitrate if you want to select things yourself. Then we have potato quality, which is self-explanatory, lossless, which is basically the best output. And then things like PNG sequence, which is basically exporting the sequence in a series of individual video frames as pictures. Now, if we press the B key, this basically allows us to enter what's called the player overview, where we see a list of all currently loaded players in the replay. So if we're in a multiplayer game, this will be the full service list within that lobby. But since it's a single player world, it just shows me the singular player. Now, if we click on a player's name here or just the head icon, it will teleport us to the player and spectate the view from their point of view. And next to each player in the list, there's a checkbox. So if we click this visible X, then basically the player will completely disappear in both the third and the first person view and we can toggle their visibility really easily. There's also some buttons like remember hidden players which saves player visibility in the replay file itself when it's reloaded. We also have show all and hide all to show and hide all players so that's going to be also useful if we have a lot of players in the lobby if we're recording multiplayer. And we can press shift to exit the player view just like we did with entities and also we can right click on the player just like we did with other entities to spectate and possess them too. So it works the same as mobs. Whilst we're in a replay we can press the N key which basically creates a thumbnail of the current replay. A thumbnail is basically a screenshot of the point in time of the player and it gives the viewer a good impression of the content of the replay itself. These help to keep the replay viewer clear and structured if you're actually sharing a replay for other people to view because they can kind of understand what's going on in the timeline, right? If you don't set one, they'll basically generate a default thumbnail to display in the replay viewer, but it's best just to take them manually. One thing that's interesting is event markers. So we mentioned earlier to use the M key to create event markers and I created one here which is this red one and we can just go straight to this red marker but i want to explain what these are for because i showed you how you can view them earlier in a sense but basically long replays they get really clunky and difficult to handle and they're just really cumbersome so event markers which we create with the m key like we did earlier it's an easy way to go through our clip and to go to certain points and know what's happening in certain durations of our clip we press the m key to set an event marker and this remembers the position where we've added it and whilst later watching the replay it's displayed on the timeline like it is here as this kind of red half triangle, right? You can also double click them to actually name them. We could give the event marker a name, so I can call it marker one. We can change its time index, its X, Y, Z position, and camera your pitch and roll settings, and press save or cancel here. So when we hover over it, now this is called marker one. And we can also delete it by clicking it and pressing the delete key too. And that's my very simple, quick guide on the replay mod. I hope this guide was useful. If it was, make sure to smash the like button and subscribe for the best Minecraft mod videos on YouTube. I tried to make this guide as quick as possible and as detailed as possible but for people who still don't understand if i was moving too quickly or if i wasn't being clear i will link the written documentation which is basically like a written version of this guide which is published by the great people who have actually made this mod which is a little bit more in depth and detailed and it's kind of easy to understand if you didn't understand my visual representation comment any questions down below i'll try and get back to you if you need any help with anything or if there's anything you didn't understand and i'll see you real soon